This is the aspirin data we alluded to early, earlier. These are hundreds of millions of dollars in studies and heroes who dedicated their lives to doing the study and being participants, yet we're not acting. There's another class of drugs called statins, the Lipitor crestors of the world, that the data show in people with a normal cholesterol, not elevated, 175, who took these drugs with an elevated inflammation, there was a dramatic effect in heart disease, and there were also effects in decreasing cancer. So the big question comes in an era where we're debating healthcare costs and it's 18.5% of GDP and rising, why are things like this optional? We did the story last week that there are 35,000 cases of human papillomavirus-associated cancer a year in the United States. We have a vaccine for this that will eliminate almost all of them. Yet only about 10% of boys and 30% of girls actually get it. So again, the optional component here is just, that doesn't make sense. There's X bandwidth for health in Washington. And for the last 15 years, it's all about healthcare finance. That discourse needs to change to health. So vitamins, 39,000 women followed for close to 20 years. They looked at people who took vitamins and didn't. Higher death rate by 15% in the women who took vitamins. Pause, is something wrong with the vitamins? You look at vitamin D, so the most common supplement today in our country. 75% of Caucasians, 85, I mean 97% of African Americans quote low in vitamin D. So first of all, who defined what normal was? It's a network, not a node. You got vitamin D, you have the sensor, which is called the receptor, and a bunch of signaling molecules. When you measure one node of a network, what does it really mean? Remember, you and I developed a very complex mechanism so we don't get too much vitamin D at once. It's called tanning, right? The reason we tan is to block vitamin D absorption. Yet we go around it all the time by taking these pills. And so, in fact, the government of Canada had to outlaw vitamin D testing because it was 11% of their entire laboratory budget three years ago. So there's an epidemic of it now. But so let's look at the data. So they took 2,000 uh, women. They randomized to high-dose vitamin D versus placebo. And there was a 26% increase in bone fractures, not decrease, increase in bone fractures when you took it. There have been three other studies with more than 10,000 people since calcium and vitamin D, different levels of vitamin D, none have ever shown a benefit, ever. Lots of side effects, stomach upset, kidney stones, et cetera. Here, more fractures, yet no benefit. Yet over 60% of women over the age of 65 take this. So about two years ago, the US Preventive Task Force issued a statement that no woman in the country should be taking calcium and vitamin D supplementations. It did not change vitamin D sales at all. Astonishing truth is, is that we're not listening anymore. What Steve Jobs said was correct. We've turned off to information regarding health.